In today's video, I'm going to tell you who I think are the top 15 NHL rookies to keep an eye on for the coming 18-19 season. And that's coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned off the top, today I want to rank for you the top 15 rookies to keep your eye on for the 18-19 season coming up here very soon. Now if you've been following along with our top prospect report series, obviously we have a big chunk of the NHL already covered. We still have a handful of teams left to come, which will be coming up here in the coming days and completed over the next week. So a lot of these players you've already heard me talk about, uh, some of them I've talked about more than others, but these for me are the top guys that are going to have the most impact and be in the race for the Calder Trophy come season's end. So let's jump into the list here. At number 15, I've got New York Rangers prospect, Elias Anderson. Now Anderson, as you know, should be a very responsible two-way forward. With the Rangers going through their rebuild, he should be given a very big opportunity. Uh, there's going to be another Rangers rookie to keep your eye on as well, uh, which ranks a little bit higher here on our list. But you probably remember Elias Anderson. He's represented Sweden at the World Juniors. He's got tremendous upside, but he's very responsible two-way game. Certainly want to keep your eyes open for him for the coming season. Number 14 on my list, we've got Martin Nishkash from the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, he's expected to be probably playing in the top two center spots. Uh, obviously, he could very well potentially end up on the line with the number two pick from the 2018 draft, Andre Sveshnikov, who we're going to speak about a little bit higher up on this list. Uh, but the fact that he has an opportunity to potentially play with Sveshnikov and where he's a good playmaking center, he could certainly be racking up the assists this year and kind of get himself into the conversation for one of the top rookies in the league. So Martin Nikash is going to have a lot of opportunity in Carolina and certainly a player you're going to want to keep your eye on. Next up at number 13, we've got Nashville Predators forward Ellie Tolvin. Now, Tolvin had created a lot of hype for himself. He had an excellent year last year playing over in the KHL before he signed his contract and he made the jump over to North America to join the Predators. Uh, he did get into a few games before the end of the year. Didn't look the greatest, had a little bit of a slow start, but hopefully that was enough to kind of get his feet wet and get acclimated a bit to the NHL that he can get off to a better start with the Predators this season. Uh, the only reason I haven't ranked lower on this list is because the Predators lineup is so deep I don't see him getting as big of an opportunity to play a bigger role with more ice time than some of these other players. Uh, I do expect him to still have a pretty solid rookie season, um, but I think some of these other guys might kind of steal the spotlight as they have a chance to play a bigger role for their club. Next up at number 12, we get the newly signed Ottawa Senator Brady Kachuk. Now, leading into the last little while here, there was a lot of uncertainty where Brady Kachuk was going to play this year. Uh, but given the fact that he just signed his pro contract with Ottawa and the fact that they are going to be giving him every opportunity to make this team, I do fully suspect Brady Kachuk to, uh, to stick in the NHL this year and have a pretty strong season with Ottawa. Given where everything is at with that franchise, I, I'm sure they're going to give him plenty of opportunity to play in their top six, get a lot of ice time, play a bigger role, and we'll see what he's able to do. Uh, so I do certainly think he has a potential to be an impact player for Ottawa and, and create a lot of hype around himself for being one of the top rookies in the league. Next up at number 11, we got Philip Zadina of the Detroit Red Wings. Now Zadina, as we know, at the draft, Kind of fell down into Detroit's lap. He was expected to go a little higher than what he ended up doing. Had a tremendous year last year playing for the Halifax Mooseheads. Uh, this guy should as well, because of Detroit's position uh, and where they're at with their team, likely get a bigger role as well. Uh, I can certainly see Zadina being a sniper in the NHL level. Wouldn't surprise me to see him score 20, 25, maybe even 30 goals in his rookie campaign. Uh, I do have him ranked ahead of Kachuk, uh, just because I think he might rack up some more points and just create a little bit more buzz for himself. Um, but, uh, you know, Zadina is certainly going to get plenty of opportunity in Detroit, and he's likely a name you're going to be hearing a lot during the upcoming campaign. Next up at number 10, I've got Hendrik Borgstrom and the Florida Panthers. Now, Borgstrom is fully expected to make this team and play like a third-line type of center role. It is quite possible, depending on how things shake out through training camp and how he looks in that position, he could end up playing as a winger, that is a possibility. And if he ends up playing as a winger, he very well could get some time in the top six. Um, it is possible that the Panthers may kind of juggle their lines a little bit here. They do have other uh, guys who are fully capable of filling those top six roles, don't get me wrong, um, but they very well may decide to kind of balance things out a little bit more, which could create uh, more of an offensive role for Borgstrom. He's proven in the past he can be a very offensive player. 
Um, it is possible at this point in time he could play as a center or a wing, so we'll see how that goes. But either way, I do expect him to get a pretty decent-sized role with the Panthers this year and do expect him to be one of the top rookies to keep your eye on. Next up at number nine, we have another Rangers prospect, and that's Philip Hedl. Now, Hedl proved last year playing in the American Hockey League that he could certainly light it up at the pro level. Obviously, from the Czech Republic, uh, he had a tremendous showing playing over there before he came over to North America as well. Certainly one of the top guys to keep your eyes on this year. Uh, him and Anderson both expected to be in the Rangers lineup this season. But I do see Hedl having a little bit more offensive upside than Anderson, so I do think it's possible he'll get a little bit more of a spotlight, uh, rack up some more points, and probably be higher up in the conversation when it becomes to talk about top rookies or called to trophy nominations. Um, so I do fully suspect he'll have a plenty of opportunity in the Big Apple this year to shine. And I do expect big things out of Philip Hedl this year for the Rangers. Next up at number eight, we've got Miro Heiskanen of the Dallas Stars. Now Heiskanen is going to be one of the top defensive rookies in the league for sure this season. There is another guy that might kind of overshadow him. I think you've heard of him and we'll get to him here momentarily as we reach the higher up here on this list. Even with that said, Heiskanen is certainly no slouch at all and is expected to get some time with the Stars this year. I do think he'll be a regular in their lineup. I can certainly see him being in their top six defense score. So I do expect him to get a fair bit of time, but I do think likely uh, to kind of shelter his minutes a little bit, he likely gets more of a third pairing type role to at least get started. Depending on how things go, depending on injuries and his play, I can certainly see him working his way up through the lineup, possibly through the year, or at least into next year. Uh, I do expect Heiskanen to, to do big things in Dallas. He's got a lot of potential. Uh, there's you know a reason why when the Stars were apparently trying hard to acquire Eric Carlson, that he would have been the centerpiece going back to Ottawa Wannett. Obviously, they have uh, a lot of reason to believe he's going to be a tremendous defenseman himself. So I do expect Heiskanen to be one of the top defensemen in this year's rookie class and hopefully do good things for the Dallas Stars. Next up at number seven, we've got Kaylor Yamamoto of the Edmonton Oilers. Now, I think Yamamoto is the type of player who can step in, and I do see him possibly getting a top six role playing alongside Connor McDavid and Ryan Nugent Hopkins. I really think he'd complement that line very well. He did have an opportunity to get into uh, a brief amount of games last year with the Oilers before being sent back to junior. He did play some with McDavid, and in my opinion, he looked pretty good. Um, I think he has a lot of potential to fit well with McDavid. He's really quick, really fast, uh, so obviously he can keep up um, with McDavid more than a lot of other guys. Uh, and he certainly has the offensive abilities to finish and as well as be creative as well uh, to kind of play alongside the, those guys as well. So I see Yamamoto fitting well. And when you're playing with guys like McDavid and uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, you're bound to get some points, look pretty good, and hopefully have a pretty solid rookie campaign. If I were the Oilers, that's where I would slot him. Uh, that's where I see him in that lineup. Uh, so we'll see if that's the case. He's likely going to be uh, one of the top rookies to watch this year. Number six, we've got Anthony Sorelli of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, Sorelli isn't the most offensively gifted player in the world here compared to some of these other guys, but he really showed during his call-up towards the end of last season that he really fit in that Tampa Bay lineup, and he was certainly putting up the points uh, to boot. So I certainly think that's going to continue this year. Sorelli should definitely be a regular in the lineup for Tampa for the entire season. Um, and I do expect what he was doing last year and into the playoffs to continue into the regular season. Next up at number five, we got Ryan Donato with the Boston Bruins. Now, Donato did sign his pro contract, ending his collegiate career at the end of the last collegiate season. Got into a few games with the Bruins last year at the end of the season, and he looked really solid. Scored five goals in 12 games. Got into a few playoff games, but didn't get a lot of action during their uh, playoff run. Uh, however, I do see Donato playing a much bigger role heading into this season. Ryan Donato is such a smart hockey player with a great shot. Personally, I think he can be a 25 to 30 goal scorer. I can certainly see him ranking high in a lot of rookie categories this season and having a terrific season for the Boston Bruins. Next up at number four, we've got Buffalo Sabres center iceman Casey Middlestat. Now, Casey Middlestat likely gets a number two center role with the Sabres this year after they trade at Ryan O'Reilly. I fully suspect that's going to open up the door for Middlestat to move into the number two slot behind Jack Eichel. Middlestat is an absolute wizard with the puck. He's a tremendous stick handler, great passer, uh, can certainly finish as well. Had a terrific showing at last year's World Junior Championships, looked really solid. Was Team USA's best player, in my opinion. Actually, you can even make the argument he might have been the best player in the whole tournament. With the Buffalo Sabres being where they're at with their roster and the moves they made this offseason, I think he's going to have an opportunity to play with some pretty solid offensive players. 
and I do see him getting a bigger role, like I said, with O'Reilly being moved on from the Sabres lineup. So he's going to get a shot at a top six role with some offensive players, and he's quite talented himself. So I can see Casey Middlestop being one of the top rookies this year and being in the Calder conversation the whole way through. Next up at number three, we've got the number two draft pick from the 2018 NHL draft, Andre Svechnikov of the now Carolina Hurricanes. Now, Svechnikov is expected to get a big role with the club right away. His proven goal-scoring abilities last year in junior really showed what he was capable of. Most people have the firm belief he'll jump into the NHL right away and be a strong performer uh, in a top six role for the Hurricanes right off the get-go. Like I said, he may very well have an opportunity to play with another rookie we mentioned earlier, Martin Neskash, and I do think that the two together could work quite well. Svechnikov was scoring at a terrifically high rate in junior last year. Unfortunately, his season was cut a little short due to injuries, um, but really, I do suspect the fact that he could very well be a 30 to 40 goal scorer in his rookie year. I can see him maybe putting up some similar numbers uh, to guys like we've seen, like for example, with like a Patrick Laine uh, just a couple seasons ago. Uh, I do think he is that good and has that potential uh, to be a solid goal scorer right away. I do fully suspect Sveshnikov to be ranking high in a lot of the offensive statistics for the NHL during the 18-19 season and be one of the strongest contenders for the Calder Trophy. Next up at number two, we've got a Buffalo Sabres defenseman, number one overall draft pick from the 2018 NHL Draft, Rasmus Dahlin. Now, Dahlin only ranks at number two just mainly because of the fact that he is a defenseman and there is obviously two sides to their game. I think offensively he'll do great. I, I do. I can see him maybe putting up 30, 40 points as a rookie defenseman next year. Obviously his defensive game is going to need some work, uh, and that's going to be the area that just kind of probably draws back a little bit of the attention. But he is going to be a real treat to watch. I can't wait to see him in a Sabres uniform uh, and get him on that NHL ice and see how well he can do in his first season. I obviously, he's coming in with really, really high expectations, but at the same time, being a rookie defenseman, uh, being 18 years old, you do have to you know, wonder that there is going to be areas of his game that is going to need improvement, uh, and obviously that's going to likely be more so on the defensive side of the puck. Uh, so I'll be curious to see what Darling can do. I do suspect, though, he'll be the top defenseman of the year for rookies, uh, and he's certainly going to create a lot of hype around him throughout the year, so he's going to be one of the top guys to watch for the Calder Trophy in the 18-19 season. Next up here at number one is the guy I have as the biggest rookie to watch next season is Elias Pettersson of the Vancouver Canucks. Now, yes, I do have him ranked higher than Darlene, even though Darlene's coming out as a 2018 first overall pick. Obviously, Pedersen was drafted the year before, but this kid has had a tremendous year, uh, breaking records all over the place in Sweden and the SHL. I really think with where the Canucks are at, with their organization and their talent levels, he's going to be giving a tremendous opportunity, uh, especially when you see the likes of players he could play with, like Brock Besser and Bo Horvat, uh, amongst others. Uh, there's certainly a lot of possibilities here that Pedersen is really, really going to have a breakout season and really help the Canucks. Given where the Vancouver Canucks are at with their franchise and where their roster is at, I do fully suspect Pedersen to be given a huge opportunity to play a big role with the club this year. Uh, he's going to have some other young offensive players to play with as well, uh, at least on the power play. Hard to say exactly where they slot all their lines right now, but you know he's going to be given a major role, uh, especially when it comes to power play time, getting him out there with guys like Horvat and Besser is certainly going to help as, as well. Uh, and Pedersen is a guy uh, that has a tremendous opportunity to be a very dynamic forward here and gain a lot of attention throughout this season. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to win the Calder Trophy. Obviously, you know, other guys like Dahlin and Svechnikov and many of the other guys we talked about very well are going to be in this conversation as well. Uh, but for me, Pedersen's coming into this rookie season in 18-19 probably with arguably the most hype. Uh, even though Dahlin, I have him at number two for being the top draft selection. Pedersen was breaking records all over the place in Sweden last year. Records that were held by some very uh, notable players and guys like Peter Forsberg and Kent Nelson of the Sancho who's had tremendous careers at the pro level uh, for a long time. So if he's breaking those types of records, that just shows how much hype he's coming into the league with and how much expectations are going to be on him. So I fully suspect Elias Pedersen for me is the main rookie to watch for the upcoming 18-19 season. So that's my top 15 rookies. I don't expect everybody to agree or disagree with all my selections. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments and let me know who you think should be on this list or where they should be ranked. We can certainly continue the conversation and debate these selections further down in the comment section. If you haven't done so already, don't forget as well, we have Top Shelf Hockey merchandise. We have some great t-shirts and hoodies for sale. We have the Top Shelf Hockey merchandise store now available. There's a link down below in the description if you haven't had a chance to check that out already. If you're new to the channel here, hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams, and there's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. 
As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will catch you next time.